Jesus, God, we thank you. Humbarakaze, kalavia sundai. We thank you so much, oh God, for doing things in the background that we haven't even seen. For preparing for us a table. For preparing us for the things that are going to happen. And God, we thank you that you are sending your son back to us again. I thank you for the people that you have given us, oh God. The people that you have removed from our lives. Father, we thank you. And I pray that every single person right about here would be used by God like never before this week. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. shake it off. Certain snakes, certain devils in your life, you just gotta shake it off. You've got to learn how to shake it off. Just shake it off, somebody. That was last week. And um, I, one thing I didn't say last week that I want to say this week is that Paul didn't only have to shake off the, the gossip that was being spread about him in front of him. People started saying that he's a murderer because of how the snake bit him. He was already in pain and he's already gotten so much going at him and on top of that, people are talking about him. He had to shake off the people that were talking about him. Then uh, shortly afterwards, where they realized that this snake that bit him has no effect on him. They began to call him a god. He also had to shake that off too. Yeah. You don't hear what I'm saying right about here. You got to learn how to shake off the, the praises of men. The, the things that people are saying good about you, they also got to be shaken off of you. They look at you as a God, you say, no, I'm not God, but there's only one God that can take you out of prison. There's only one God that can take you out of a place where you were supposed to die, but you're still standing. And that's the type of God that we serve here in Kingdom Embassy. Hallelujah. And uh, tonight's message title is, uh, I've been struck down, but not destroyed. I've been struck. Anybody here been struck before? But you're not destroyed. As you take your seats, I want you to open your Bible with me to the book of Acts chapter number 12. Acts chapter number 12. Praise can be as just uh, destructive as criticism. And you've got to know when to shake off certain things in your life. Paul had to shake off both praise and criticism. Mm. All right. One thing I found in that scripture as you're turning to Acts chapter number 12 is that um, while Paul was on his way to his final destination, they stopped for a pit stop. But before the pit stop, they lowered their anchors in the middle of the storm. And they realized they made a mistake. They had to cut the ropes and keep on going. They lowered the anchor in the storm. And I'm here to tell somebody, uh, don't, uh, don't lower your anchor in the storm. The storm is not your final destination. This storm you're currently in is not going to be a place you'll always stay in. Uh, don't lower your anchor in the storm somebody glory glory uh, Acts chapter number 12 I don't know if I have Rajan here to read 
Um, last week I told you to bring your family. Who here came with your family? Somebody from your family. Lift your hand. You came with your family. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight's going to be a great night. It's going to be a great night. I had a quite busy week. And um, in the midst of my busyness, I turned to the news station and I saw some tragic news happening in our very own state. Just about 20 minutes from where we are, there happened to be a school shooting. And this was a high school in Winder, Georgia. My heart broke because of not only it was people died, not only for the families that were broken, that are still broken, um, but it's happening in a place where it shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't happen anywhere, but in front of kids, it's a whole other thing. When kids have to be so scared in a place, they should not be scared. And um, when I was reading Acts chapter number 12, I then began to pray for those that were affected by the school shooting. And as a church, we've got to learn when to pray. Um, you don't only pray after an event for the people that were affected by the event, but you also pray that it wouldn't happen again in our state, in our country. Amen. It's a very important to, to learn and to know when to pray as a church. Uh, main verse, uh, Acts chapter number 12, verse number 1 through 24, if you can read, that would be great. Are you ready for the word? Before we begin reading, who here is your first time? Lift your hand. Glory be to Jesus. Clap for them. Clap for them. Um, welcome to Kingdom Embassy Atlanta. Um, Highway 85 once again had a major car accident and many people are still stuck. So I want to, if you're watching online and you're on 85, keep going. I gotta say it, keep going, come to church. We'll pray for you afterwards. Uh, also, those that are watching online, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Who came out of state? Wow. Where did you come from? <laughs> Phoenix? Wow. Phoenix, Arizona? Out of state? Salt Lake City, Utah. Clap for them. Somebody is traveling. <laughs> from different states to do and be a part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Anybody else came out of state? More than two hours. More than one hour. All right, that's because of the traffic. <laughs> Amen. All right, Acts chapter number 12. This one's going to be so interesting. I want you to be inclined to the Word of God tonight. Amen? Amen. Let's read. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street and immediately 
the angel departed from me. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered from me the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Verse 12. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. Now Peter continued knocking and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord has brought him out of the prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Then as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Verse 20. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord. And having made Blastus the king's personal aide, their friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne, and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a god and not of a man. Then immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him, because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord struck him because he didn't give God the glory. This is not the Old Testament. This is the New Testament. And that's a little scary to me. Uh, whenever you're used by God, you tend to be in a place, in a put in position where people give you glory, but you always got to shake it off and give God all the glory. Uh, the angel struck this man, the king, and he was destroyed. I've been struck, but what? Not destroyed. This man was struck by an angel and he was destroyed indeed and i've got to tell somebody here that um if you're on the right track you will be struck if you're on the wrong track you will be struck but depending on who's on the inside of you will determine what will happen to you when you're struck being struck is inevitable you're gonna be struck you're gonna be struck down as a believer it's gonna happen one day or another but um depending on who's in you will determine whether you get back up or stay down yeah it's the truth uh, oh jesus uh, now about that time herod verse number one the king stretched out his hand to harass some of the church uh, there was a day i was preaching this in our old building that um that herod spirit is still in our churches today and you've got to realize that the Herod spirit is out there to harass the church. And you've got to be able to be a believer that's able to recognize what spirit is attacking the church today. Uh, you've got to understand that the world will always attack the church in a few areas. One of those places is finances. The, the world would like to put a limit to how a believer uh, should be, uh, uh, you know, dealing with their finances. Uh, why is it that the world can tell a pastor how he should live his life, but the church is never saying how the world should spend their money? It's bad for a pastor to have a helicopter. It's bad. If a, a pastor died in a helicopter, you can already see the comments in the comment section from the world. 
But if somebody that's in the world that's famous dies in a helicopter, no one's going to say anything. But our condolences. You see the idea. It's, it's, it, you've got to understand that whenever the church is being attacked in a particular area, you've got to recognize it spiritually because that's where God's blessings are also. If, if the church is being attacked in the area of giving in this season, that means you've got to be giving this season. If the church is being attacked in other areas, for example, it can be uh, uh, prophets are being attacked. That means that God's about to release more prophets in the churches and in the world. More prophets are being birthed. Whenever the church is being attacked in that area, you've got to jump in and say, this is where I'm investing. Uh, for those of you that invest in stocks, you know that whenever they're going down, most people, they jump in and invest at that moment, not when it's going up. And that's how it works as well in the realms of the spirit. When the church is being attacked in a particular area, you've got to understand that's where God is working on. So it's being struck. The moment it's struck, you know that growth's about to happen. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but whenever your bone is broken and it begins to heal, um, any doctors in the room that know the terminology, there is extra ligaments or I don't know what to call it. It, it just makes it stronger where it was broken. Uh, there are some things that are growing more because of where it was broken. So also it can be used better. You've got to understand that sometimes you'll be broken, you'll be struck. But when you get back up, it won't happen to you again. Especially in that area. You've been, you've been denied, you've been rejected over and over. But you have learned your lesson now that you're not going to get into a relationship like that again. So you're going to be protected. And you've got to understand that right now in our generation... There is something called the Herod spirit. It's not a person, but it's a spirit that's operating in the church today. Uh, the devil's attacking the church in different areas right now. I'm sure you're able to recognize how the devil's doing it. Um, one of the ways the devil is attacking the church is by making the church mediocre, watered down, uh, powerless, more more entertainment, less power. You know, there's no solutions in the house of God anymore. Nobody can come to church and receive a deliverance anymore. No one can come to church and receive healing anymore because of the pressure that we've got here in America of different areas. Some of the people, you've got to understand that uh, whenever the Herod spirit attacks, he's attacking people not because of what they've done, but just to gain power in their world. Herod attacked James and killed James. You've got to understand James dies not because James did anything bad. James died because Herod wanted to be in a place of becoming a king. So it was nothing but political. So sometimes the world will attack the church or try to get the church to be on their side for their agenda to go the way they want it to go. So that's the kind of era we're in right now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go watch the, uh, the news. <laughs> you, you realize that um, even as we're here, there's a debate going on. And a lot of them are going to use us as a way to get them into office. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'll use us, you. It might be your age. It might be your skin tone. It might be your religious belief. But they're after you to get themselves in a place of high power. This is what was happening with Herod. It was a political leader getting involved in the church and getting their minds twisted so that their agenda could go the way they want to go. This is what's taking place here with Peter and the disciples. He stretched out his hand to harass some of the church. And I pray that nobody here will be harassed by some Herod spirit in the name of Jesus. Verse number five. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but, I love this part, constant prayer. Somebody say constant prayer. Constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Um, where was the church when James was in prison? Where was the church praying when James was being harassed by King Herod? 
So you, you got to understand that the church will start to pray when one thing go, goes bad. When one thing goes wrong, it's a trigger for the church to pray. It's not a bad thing. But uh, that's a church that's not prophetic. They'll pray as a reaction of something that took place. It's not a bad thing because the church prayed for Peter and Peter was released out of prison. You get what I'm saying? So the, uh, when this is what made me pray whenever I saw the, the, the shooting taking place in our very own state. That whenever one thing happens and if it's a Herod spirit, another one's bound to happen. You're not hearing what I'm saying? If it happens once, it can happen again. And therefore the church has to pray that it doesn't happen at least in our state. It, it can't happen in our state. It can't happen to our children. It shouldn't happen anywhere, but it, let it not happen in our state. Hallelujah. We don't want to be known as that. And uh, we're going to pray today, especially for our state, if that's all right, everybody here that's from Georgia. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. You got to understand the English there for him. If I, um, come, come, come. If I'm praying for him, it's not necessarily meaning I'm taking your hand and I'm praying with you. There's a difference between praying with someone and praying for someone. Doing something for someone means they don't got to do it. So when the church is praying for you, you shouldn't be praying. Step aside. Step aside. When the church is praying for you, you'll be able to sleep. The church was praying for Peter by the church. And I've got to tell you something. The church is praying for you and your family. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're praying for you. Uh, the, the administration here, we have some papers and pens for every person here. Today we're going to write down some prayer points that you want the church to pray for you and your family. Amen. Whatever you want us to pray for, you're going to write it down on a paper. You're going to put it on the altar. And we want us, you want us to take over your prayer points uh, so that you can sleep at night. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Though. We were just here on Sunday night praying for I don't know how many hours as a serving team. Uh, we were praying and just getting closer to God, reading our word. And it was a, an amazing time if, I'm, if it wasn't just me. Amen. Serving team, where you at? We were praying for I don't know how many hours and uh, praying for one another and encouraging one another. And you got to understand that um, we're going to keep on praying. Whether it's one of us, 30 of us, or 100 of us, we're going to keep praying for the needs of the people that come to this church. The church has to pray for the people that are coming. Uh, the seat you are sitting on was prayed over by somebody before you even got here. Uh, our goal was for the, you don't come in here and leave the same. You don't come here and leave without anything that was able to just change your mind and transform your life. Our goal, our desire is for something to take place in your spirit. We want something to take place in your heart before you even leave the place uh, my desire my greatest desire is for everyone to have a testimony uh, within a week seven days of them being in this church yes, hallelujah testimonies there are evidence that prayers have been made amen, amen. amen. testimonies are evidence that prayers have been made and uh, how many of you in here is Joseph here? He's not here. He has an amazing testimony. He came up to me and said, the time you prayed for me, you prophesied over me. I went home and I slept for the first time in a long time. He said, I slept like a baby. And some babies don't sleep, but this time I'm sure he was talking about the babies that sleep well. <laughs> Amen. He slept like a baby. And the, the issue was a health issue that caused him not to be able to sleep on his back because the breathing was triggered. And you got to understand the pain that he was dealing with after a prophetic night. He went home, slept like a baby. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Maybe I'm talking to myself here. But um, the church started to pray for, for, James, sorry, for Peter. But you have to understand how hard is it to pray for Peter when you just lost James. 
it's hard to pray for something that's on the same uh, level of love if I can call it uh, they love James they sign the same way they loved Peter they it's the same family but it's really hard to pray for someone and have faith that they're gonna be all right if they're already sentenced to death tomorrow so how are you gonna have faith to pray for someone if you just lost someone a day ago and I'm, I don't know who I'm talking to right about here, but you've been dealing with a situation that's been failing over and over and over. And there's only one more day left for you. And I've got to tell you that uh, within 12 hours from now, you will have that testimony. The breakthrough shall surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. It's hard to pray for Peter when James was just assassinated. It's really tough to pray for something in your life when you just lost another thing it's really hard to have faith for something that you had faith earlier and it didn't work once why should i believe it's going to happen again i'm here to encourage you keep on praying because the church prayed and answers were given the church prayed and god released his anointing the church prayed and testimonies were birthed georgia i got a word for you the church is praying and you shall have testimonies in the name of jesus I gotta tone it down because I, I'm I still I'm page one. You may have lost the battle. You may have lost the battle. You may have lost battles. I was playing Call of Duty one day. You know who played Call of Duty? Anybody? Long time ago, I was playing Call of Duty. Call of Duty Four when it first came out. This is 2007, I believe it was. And every time you lost. There was this feeling you get like, man, I lost the game. But there was this quote that would always appear that says, you may have lost the battle, but you didn't lose the war. And I said, Lord Jesus, thank you. I'm going right back in. <laughs> I, didn't, I lost the battle, but I didn't lose the war. I'm going to win next round. I'm going to win this next round. And I've got to tell you someone, you may have lost the battle before, but you're not going to lose this war that the devil has put you in. You're going to come out on top. You are a winner and not a loser, says the Spirit of the living God. Do not stop praying when the Lord is giving you an instruction to pray. Keep on praying. When God has put faith, another hope in you, do not stop. Because He's got a word for somebody here tonight. And if I can prophesy to you, I want to prophesy. You shall have hope again. You shall have peace again. You're going to sleep again at night. Even when there's a storm, you're going to sleep. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just stay on top. Just shake off that enemy that is trying to defeat you. You're going to win this battle. Hallelujah. 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 Page one. <laughs> Page number one. And verse number six. <laughs> when Herod was about to bring him out. This is now a point where you feel like uh, you already received the foreclosure letter. <laughs> You've already received that you're going to lose that car. Like you didn't pay, it's, you know you're about to lose it. And it, you can come home tonight and your stuff can be outside. That's where they were at. The Herod was about to bring him out. That night, Peter was sleeping. A verse before that, the church was praying. Verse after, Peter is sleeping. Verse before that, the church is praying verse after Peter is sleeping the same night the church is praying is the same night Peter's sleeping I don't know who I'm talking to tonight prayer enables you to sleep at night knowing that someone's backing you up spiritually for you to overcome the victory or overcome the battle uh, can I remind you who the disciple of Peter was The disciple of Peter, sorry, can I remind you? <laughs> Who was Peter being discipled by? Who you are discipled by will determine how you face certain battles. You know that. Can I, do you know who was discipling Peter? It was Jesus. Peter was sleeping in the middle of a situation. If you go back, you find Jesus sleeping on a boat. Jesus effectively taught Peter how to deal with storms and situations that have nothing to do with you. 
So it's evidence that who you are serving on how you treat that storm. Uh, how is it that you can stay or sleep at night whenever you're about to lose your car tomorrow? How are you sleeping at night if you got two guards next to you, one on your right and one on your left? Peter was sleeping between, the Bible says, two soldiers. Not only was there two, but if he were to defeat those two perhaps, which he wasn't going to fight them. Yes, yes, I know he's chopped somebody's ear off one time, but in this case he was chained and he's being held down by two soldiers. But it also says there are 16 other soldiers waiting for him if anything were to happen. So there's no way out. But there was two main soldiers that were holding him down with chains. Imagine one soldier on the right, one soldier on the left. He's knocked out snoring. Last time I checked, soldiers typically won't let you sleep if you're about to be executed. They don't let you sleep. They don't let you do what you want to do. Anyone been in jail before? You know what I'm talking about. You don't want to sleep in jail. Sleep with one eye open, you know what I mean? He got two problems, one on his right, one on his left. And I'm here to tell somebody, when you got a problem that's so big on your right, you got a problem that's so big on your left, you got to sleep on it. Sometimes your greatest breakthrough comes when you're sleeping on it. Let God deal with it while you're sleeping. The Bible says that God never sleeps nor he slumbers, so why should you stay awake? He's fighting your battles. If you stay awake, you're delaying your breakthrough. Just go to sleep, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, go to sleep. If you're sleeping in my church, I allow you. God is working on you. Something happening right here. I will not kick you out for sleeping. My sermons are not boring. Trust me. But if you're sleeping in this atmosphere, I know that God's doing something in you. Uh, the last time I checked, again, you find a little bit before Jesus, you find someone called Adam. God put Adam to sleep. To give Adam what he was longing for and what he was looking for. Uh, oh, Jesus. Adam was looking for someone that's kind of like him, but he couldn't find it. The Bible says he even looked. He tried animals. The Bible says he looked it for it in animals. It didn't work. He looked for it in other places. It didn't work. Then finally, God put him what? To sleep. While he was sleeping, God took out of him his breakthrough. So your breakthrough is found on the inside of your breakthrough is found on the inside of you. God says you are gifted when you are born. That very gift is what you've got to focus on. The very gift that's within you is what's going to make you wealthy one day. Oh, the Bible says in the book of Corinthians that the gifts of the Spirit are for the prophet. P-R-O-F-I-T of all. Let me skip it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, imagine... Uh, you're gifted by God. You're, you're anointed by God to break chains, to raise the dead, to, to open deaf ears. Imagine this for just one second. I was in Pennsylvania one day and uh, some, one of the ladies, I was at a dentist. The lady came up to us. She said, uh, can you, you're a man of God. I said, yes. She said, can you pray for my daughter? I said, yes. What's going on with your daughter? You know what she said? She needs healing. I said, well, that's my, that's my area of... <laughs> expertise if I could call it like that you know, like I've been dealing with this thing for a little while now if I defeated some devil it was the devil of sickness let's let's talk about that for a second if you got some allergies to peanuts or bread or pizza today you'll go home and eat whatever you want in the name of Jesus page one page two is next week the lady says, can you pray for my daughter? Both my ears went pee. They started ringing really loud, both of them. I went deaf in both ears. And I said, uh, can I ask you a question? She said, yes. Does your daughter have deafness in her ears? She broke down in tears. I said, after this, I'm going to your house. I'm gonna, I don't care where you live. I'm driving to your house and I'm praying for your daughter. She began to weep. She said, this is only but God. I dreamt this was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to happen but by you, but let's go. Let's go to my house. After work, she gave me her number, went to her house. Oh, Jesus. True story. She's like eight years old. Now, um, if you know anything about business, if somebody owns their own dentist, you know they got money. And if you got a daughter that's been deaf since birth, you know they're going to appreciate you for driving that far. Gas ain't cheap. 
So I went there knowing she'll be healed. And I knew that God will provide too. I went there, prayed for her with the motive of her being healed alone. That's it. No money, nothing. We got there, prayed for her. I said, both your ears are going to be healed right now. We began to pray for her. Her mom, first of all, when we walked in, she started shouting for her daughter to come downstairs. The top of her lungs, the daughter can't hear. She went up there. Even with her hearing aids, she couldn't hear. Brought her down. We prayed for her. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ears, I command you to open in the mighty and powerful name of every demon that's in her. I command you to leave once and for all. Never touch her again. And I command your ears to open right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I said, do you hear me? She said, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. She was like, yeah, I hear you. I'm like, no, seriously, do you hear? She's like, yes. I'm like, why are you not, ama- why are you not shocked? She's like, I don't know. I hear you now. It popped. I hear them both. I can hear. The mom broke down in tears. The father broke it. Like, how could this happen so fast? We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on hearing aids alone. Everything we can do for her eardrums to have surgery. What can happen for our own daughter to have ears that can hear? Oh, the parents broke down. Now I'm going to ask you something right here. If I call them now, right now. I haven't talked to them, I don't know how many years. But if I call them now, say, listen, uh, we're doing a church project. We need help financially. Don't you think they'll be like, okay. Yeah, we'll do something for you. Don't you think, what if I even said, hey, listen, I'm broke. I I need some gas money. Do you think they'll give me? They will. So the, the breakthrough is in you. Every one of you, you're talented in one way or another. So your biggest financial breakthrough is found on the inside of you. Who did God call you to be? And who is God calling you to be in this season? What if there is somebody out there in your neighborhood that's depressed, wanting to kill themselves and don't even want to get back up again? What if God's going to use you to speak one word to get them out of their depression and suicidal thoughts? God can use you in that area. If it's not in the areas of signs, wonders, and miracles, it can be simply to encourage someone and that person can give you their business. They can simply just bless you with what they want to bless you with. They don't owe you. You can't pull it from them. But if you focus on the gift, God will focus on the people coming to you. If you've put your focus on growing your gift, you will go very far in life. Mm. Page one. And Herod was about to bring him out. That night Peter was asleep between two soldiers. And uh, this was interesting. And the guards, be, <laughs> before the doors, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains, not the rapper in Atlanta, <laughs> bound with two chains between two sho- soldiers. The guards before the door were keeping in prison. Now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and sh- a light shined or shone. In the prison. Um, I watched prison break before. And every time they broke out, it was at night. Any prison break movie you watch, or anyone that escapes prison, they usually do it at night. Every prison that you're stuck in, it's going to happen at night. You're going to leave at night. When you're praying at night, God will respond. When you wake up at 3 a.m. to pray, this is when God breaks you out of prison. I, I can't sleep. I was just praying all night. God's gonna bre- It's a sign that God is about to break you out of a prison. But uh, what's so weird to me is that the angel came and just kind of did something that you're not supposed to do. Shine light. Like if you're going to break us out, turn the lights off. Like cut the power. <laughs> We're, not, we're supposed to be not seen if we're going to leave this place. But the, the angel shining a light in an area that's supposed to be dark for us to escape. This means that God's about to do an unusual miracle in your life. God's about to do something quite unusual that doesn't make sense in the light for everyone to see it. You know, Jesus. You, Peter was in a place where he was leaving the prison 
in a very interesting way. Um, and many of you could probably relate with this. There were people that couldn't recognize him. One version says that even one of the guards was awake. This means that people, they see you, but they're not seeing you. They're not acknowledging you even exist. So what happened there is that God allowed certain things to happen for Peter to leave the prison. And one of the people that God wasn't even worried about was the one that was sitting there that didn't even think he existed in this planet. This man was able to walk right past them to his breakthrough. So don't worry about those people in your life that don't think you exist. They treat you like trash at work. Don't, don't worry about it. Your breakthrough will be right in front of their eyes. They won't even see it until you come out. Don't worry about the people in your workplace. Right now, they don't see you're a millionaire, but the God that's in you. Oh, Jesus. You are a millionaire, says the Spirit of the living God. In the inside of you, you carry breakthroughs for people. You're more valuable than you think you are. You're going to be the light for so many people. Don't doubt that for any reason. God's going to guide you into a place where you need to be. Understand this, that, that whenever Peter was let out of prison, he was guided by a light. Uh, an angel shine a light. This means when the church prays, angels are released. And when the church prays, direction becomes easier. Oh, you're missing it right here. When the church is praying for you, your direction of where you should go in life becomes more clear. You need someone to pray for you. Where do I, man of God, where do I go? I need direction. I don't know if I should go right or left or straight or backwards. Like, which man should I choose? I have five to choose from, you know? Like, which way should I go? I need direction. How many of you have been there? You need direction. Prayer is something that releases an angel to give you light upon your situation so that you can have direction on where you should go. Check this out. The wise men, when Jesus was born, the Bible says that they were looking for Jesus. And what did they do? They followed a, a star, a light to get to where Jesus was. Maybe it was an angel. But the same situation, Peter was following the light. So were the wise men that were following the light. I'm here to tell somebody it takes wisdom to follow a light. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> You see the light, you know where the light is, but it also takes wisdom. They're called wise men for a reason. They've got to learn how to follow the light. May God give you wisdom in this season on how to follow the light that's so bright in you. Oh, Jesus, the light of God, the light of Christ. You are the light, says the Lord. Oh, Jesus. I'm here to tell somebody here that God is going to guide you and lead you into the place where you need to be this season. Angels are released. That when they're released, a light is given. The um, Bible says something very interesting. I keep saying this and I'll say it again. That uh, He says that the, I am the light, not only to the world, but I am the light unto your what? Feet. Another verse says, I am the light unto your, on your path. Would you rather have the light shine up to a point where your next step is or into the entire path to be lit up? Some seasons, it won't be the whole path that will be lit up. Some season, it will be one step at a time. Because of where you came out of, God just got to say, just take one more step. It, it's, it, it, some will say it's easier for the path, but it's also pretty easy when the next step is uh, told to you where you should go. Like, you got to understand that whenever there's a light that's shining onto your feet, it's already a breakthrough to know I got to take one more step. Uh, one more step is all I gotta need to take. One more step I'm gonna take. Because of the light that God has given me, it's empowering me to take one more step. Some people, they haven't taken another step in so many years, but I'm here to prophesy. Take another step. Take another step. Keep on moving. You're not jumping. You're just stepping. He's giving you a light to take another step. Go apply for that house. Go apply for that car. Go apply for the th apartment. Go apply for the very thing you need to apply to. Apply to the, the job that you know that you'll never get approved for. Apply for the position that you know that they will never consider you. Go apply. 
I'm prophesying to myself. Oh, Jesus. Page two. The light shines. And the light shined in the prison. And the next part of the verse says, and he struck Peter. And he struck Peter. The light shined in the prison and he struck Peter. Um, if I were to strike you right now. How would it feel? He wants to be struck. God is striking someone. God's striking someone. And when he strikes you, he strikes you with his light. He strikes you with his word. You're reading the word, you get struck. Mm. You're like, hey. The light will shine so bright. Then after the light shined, you get struck. Now realize that um, the angel struck Peter. It was painful. I'm sure it was painful. Because he woke up out of his sleep. It's like, what just happened? I just got struck. When you're struck, many people, they complain. They start to say the devil's a liar. I was sleeping, now I'm awake. Now I can't sleep. You go to the, you have to go to the bathroom, 3 a.m. for the first time in I don't know how many years. All of a sudden, you were struck. Now you can't sleep. Sometimes God will strike you in your sleep for you to wake up and tell you it's time to go. And he said, uh, put on your clothes. We're going. The next time that you get struck by an angel of God, you will put on clothes to an occasion you won't even know where you're going. Let me skip it. You got to learn to praise him in your pain. I was struck, but I'm still praising him. Because I know that that striking right about there is going to take me where I need to go. Yeah. You got to learn to praise Him when you're struck. You got to learn to praise Him when things are not feeling comfortable. Comfort doesn't mean you're in the right place with God. Discomfort sometimes means God is leading you to where you need to go. Discomfort sometimes is needed. Now understand that angel came to strike him so that he can keep on going. So when you're struck by an angel, you have to realize that it's for you to keep on moving. Angel said, get up. It's time to go. <laughs> Jesus, I thought it was something crazy. <laughs> the angel struck him. The angel uh, struck me right there. <laughs> it's not a curse that people are leaving you. Sometimes the way an angel will strike you isn't painful directly to you, but it's by simply people leaving you. The angel struck Peter. Peter left the people he was with. Yeah. Someone's going to get striked and people will be left. Yeah. So you got to understand and recognize who are the people that God's removing from my life. Yeah. It's for me to keep on moving. Yeah. On, Every time that God strikes you, he strikes you in a way by removing people in your life. It's yeah. painful. But it needs to happen for you to keep on moving. It has to happen for you to keep going. God has removed people out of my life personally so that I can keep going further to where I need to go. You've got to realize God will remove people out of your life, friends out of your life, people that you love so much out of your life so that you can just keep on moving. It's not easy, but I tell you something, when he does it, it's worth it. You realize later on that if he didn't strike you then, then you'd be struck down later. It's better to be struck now than struck down in public. Strike me in private, oh God. Strike me while I'm in my prison, not when I'm on the pulpit. Strike me here while nobody sees it. Strike me right about there. Jesus, help me. Oh, Jesus. Not all discomfort is a curse. It's not a curse that people are leaving you. 
I was listening to Prophet Lovi just the other day. He said something very interesting. He said, sometimes people leaving your life is deliverance in itself. You ever stop and say, thank you, God, for removing that person? Thank you for removing this person. Thank you for removing that person. It ain't easy, but God, I thank you because if you didn't remove them then, then I would have been in the same place today. Your limitation sometimes is tied to a person. Your financial growth sometimes is tied to a person. Sometimes you got to let go of certain people because if you don't let go of them, your whole entire family will go down. Can I talk about that? Certain people at your workplace yeah. will mess you up. They're not messing you up. You're not the target. Yeah. Your, your kids are the target. Someone's attacking you at your workplace to distract you so that your whole family can have a problem. It's, it's simple. The devil will send some woman to you as a husband, as a father of the house. That will tempt you in ways you never thought you could be tempted. Jesus, I'm talking to myself. You'll be tempted. It's either the person be removed or I will fall into temptation. I'm talking to me right here. God, remove this person because if you don't remove them right about here, I'm going to lose my family. Am I preaching to me or what? Lead me not into temptation. Lead me not into what? Lead me not. Don't lead me there. God, lead me out of that place. Like, <laughs> cancel this person out of my life. Oh, Lord, help me. Page two. Yeah, it's a, but I'm going to tell you right here, when someone leaves your life, it ain't easy. Someone you love. It's not easy to disconnect with people that finally understand you. It's not easy to disconnect with someone that you love to sin with. <laughs> because the more you sin with them, the more you look like them. And the more you look like them, the more you act like them. And the more you act like them, the more of a rabbit hole you begin to get into. And it's real tough to get out of a rabbit hole. Really tough. The more you're in it, the harder it is. The more light you need to shine to get you out of where you're in. And there's only a few people that God can use to get you out of a place like that. So keep on, keep hold, hold on to the people that are able to pull you out of your mess. If they're telling you don't get in, this is the person that's going to help you out. Don't treat them bad. All right, that was a, I felt that. That was prophetic for someone. I felt it. Second Corinthians 4, 8. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. In other words, Christ in me the hope of glory uh, but uh, for that to happen you've got to be struck down yeah. and when you're struck down the bible says the righteous fall uh, but they get back up yeah. it's the righteous that fall and get back up yeah. it's the righteous that fall yeah. uh, righteous people fall yeah. and they get back up yeah. uh, peter was striked he was struck and you got to realize the moment he was struck he got up and he began to move where he needed to go. The angel said, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Last time I checked, chains don't just fall off your hands. In this case, chains just fell off. And that was automatic. And the Bible says that the angel said to him, gird yourself, tie your sandals. So he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that there was did not know what was done by the angel was real but thought he was seeing in a vision most of your angelic encounters will be like that can i just rabbit hole for a second <laughs> can i just uh, you know 
uh, talk about an angels for a second. Sometimes your angelic encounter, you won't recognize it's an angelic encounter until the angelic encounter is over. This is called the unseen realm. Unseen is a past tense word. Seen, you know seen. It means like you saw. It's past tense. Unseen realm. This is a realm where you saw an angel, you had an encounter with an angel. You didn't talk about it while you were having the encounter, but you can only talk about it after the encounter. This is the same thing that was taking place with Peter. An angel came to him, woke him up, and he began to walk, and the chains fell off. He thought it was a dream. So there's no way, it's a vision. So angelic encounters oftentimes appear as a vision before you recognize and realize this was real. And uh, things began to work automatically for Peter. Verse 10, and when they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate. This is not just the gate. This is an iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Even the gates that were iron opened by themselves. Every gate, every door they had to go through automatically opened. You go to Walmart, doors open automatically, and you realize that that's normal for you. But in those days, there was no Walmart for doors to open automatically. Or Target, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this is a situation where Peter's being, he's able to walk through some doors automatically. The chains fell off automatically. I love it that the fact that it added the iron gate was also opened automatically. This means that any door that's closed, no matter if it's a simple door like the one you came through in this, in this room, or an iron gate that's been rusted shut, God is able to open any door that can be opened, that cannot be opened by man. God can open any door He chooses to open. Any door that's shut in your life, I got a word for you somebody, don't worry, God is able to open that door. If it seems like it's iron, if it feels like it's no possible way for a human to open this door, God is able to open the door if He chooses to. So don't ever think that that door is not able to happen. You can't go through it. You can go through that door. There's ways that God can open it for you. There's so many ways that God can do things in your life. You just got to realize that it's possible. It's possible. The Bible mentions something called the gates of thanksgiving. Um, the door is not your final destination. Meaning thanksgiving, being thankful, is not your final destination. It's only a key to open a door for you to get to somewhere else. Behind a door, you don't know what's there. But the way that you should open that door is just be thankful. Just be thankful. Some doors won't open by themselves unless you're thankful you got to be thankful for the doors that God opened to you in the past that he got you to this point in the first place some doors that are heavy they're able to be opened by the Lord hallelujah and they went out and went down the street and immediately the angel departed from him this means that God doesn't want you just to simply rely on angels only we rely on him he sends angels as helpers, but we are to rely on God, not His angels only. God sends angels to break us out of a prison, out of a place, but those angels will always be there. Certain angels are temporary just to get you to where you need to go to. Uh, if you ever felt like you were in the wrong place at the wrong time, God can get you out of that situation with ease. Uh, one advice I'll give you is the only way out is to never get in. Yeah, but God can get you out even if you got in. Certain doors, if you slipped in, you got to get out. You got to run. Certain doors, you got to understand. You've got to get out of. The faster you can do it, do it. Amen. I'm talking to somebody. I'm prophesying to me. God does not want you to rely on his angels. He wants you to rely on, on him. And when Peter had come to himself, he came to himself. After the whole encounter, this is traumatic. He came out of the trauma, and now he came to himself. Just like the prodigal son that was eating the, about to eat the pig's food, the Bible says when he came to himself, 
he realized that he has a father there waiting for him. So in this season, you have to understand the person you've been praying for is going to come to themselves. They're going to come back to themselves. They're going to come back to their right mind. Just keep on praying because the church prayed for Peter and he came back to himself. You got to realize that you're going to come back to yourself. You're going to pray for that person. Then that person shall surely respond by coming back to their right mind. You've been praying for someone that used to have their mind. Everything was fine. Everything was good. But uh, something went down. God is able to get your mind back to yourself. He's able to do it. Now when the angel had left him, he came to himself. And he said, now I know the Lord for sure. He sent his angels to deliver me from the hand of Herod. To deliver me from a person. God sent his angel to deliver him from a person. And the way he did it was by striking. So striking looks like, sometimes it's not physical. People just disappear out of your life. You've been struck but you're not destroyed you've been struck but you're not destroyed you've been struck but you're not destroyed now when Peter began to walk to the place where the people were praying for him not knowing they were praying he came to the door there was a woman called Rhoda keep on going verse number 15 but they said to her you are beside yourself They were, Peter was knocking on the door. Peter stood at the gate. They said to her, you're crazy. There's no way that's Peter. We don't believe it. The church is praying for Peter's release. Yet while they're praying, they don't believe he's actually there. This means the unbelievable prayers you're praying are about to be answered. Amen. They begin to say it was Peter's angel. Because in those days, they saw people, they saw angels. And the angels they saw resembled how the person looked. You saw me in your dream. It wasn't me, it was my angel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says, yeah, she kept insisting that it was him. Next verse, now Peter continued knocking. Rhoda kept insisting, Peter kept knocking. My question is, page three. Why is Peter now knocking at a door where he just walked past four doors that automatically opened? And the only door that's not being opened is by believers and by Christians. Every single door Peter walks past opens automatically. The prison doors open. Every gate's open. Now the gate where the people are praying for him, it's shut. They're not even letting him in. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's a message for somebody here. You got to understand, why is it that church people don't open doors for you? They're closing the door. They won't even open it. Yet they're praying for you. I'm, I'm praying for you, but don't open this door. I don't want you close to me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm, every single door is open. Every single one. Automatically. Bam. When I was in the world, things worked for me. But the moment I gave my life to Jesus, the moment I started serving in church, things went down. Why is it things that don't work out for me no more? It happened to Peter. Everything was working for him in the prison everywhere else, but when it got to the church people, <laughs> the door it was shut. And they knocked and he knocked. And when he opened the door, they saw him. They were astonished. That, but motioning with his hand to, for them to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord brought him out of prison. Amen. You're about to tell people. You're about to describe to people yeah, yeah. how God performed the miracle in your life. Amen. You will silence the people that have been praying for you, says the Lord. You will silence the people that have been praying for you. They're not going to pray for you no more because of the testimony that you're about to present to them. 
prayer from the church brings somebody out of darkness out of prison I'm gonna tell you something we are the church and we are praying for those that need prayer we're praying for the schools we are praying for who needs prayer hallelujah anyone that came here is desiring prayer we're praying for you today if you skip down you find the angel coming to Herod struck Herod I believe it was the same angel one angel has the same exact way of doing things this is how angel operates one angel is a messenger angel another angel is a healing angel angel Raphael is there to heal the sick right this angel is the angel that likes striking <laughs> it struck Peter and about 15 verses later it's struck Herod why didn't the angel strike Herod before Herod killed James because the angel didn't have strength to move because the church wasn't praying the fuel for any angel is your words Daniel said oh Jesus Daniel in the book of Daniel he was fasting and praying I have come the Lord I have come to you because of your many words your prayers I have come the reason why it took so long is because of X Y and Z but I have come to bring a breakthrough in your life because of what your many words your prayers have come up as a memorial before God so if you want angels to come to you and your situation keep speaking keep praying keep praising keep on moving keep your mouth open it's so important to keep your mouth open because angels their fuel is your words it's your declarations that angels respond to did you know that a word that's declared is more powerful than a, a prophetic word a declaration is so powerful for all of you here did you know even demons, they were once angels, right? Demons operate the same way. They also need words. Demons they need words. Someone has to say, curse this person or curse that one. I curse you that. For demons to operate, they need someone to speak. For angels to operate, they need someone to speak. God wants you to speak. But what you speak, the power of life and death is in the tongue what you say will determine the success or the downfall of your child what you say and how you say it will determine your financial success a lot of times we have self-pity for ourselves when things go not so good like you fail at one thing right here this something failed right here you go back to 2002 yep that's this is why I wasn't able to pass my, my middle school exam. I'm not going to be able to pass this. <laughs> we go so far back with our failures and we keep on speaking about those failures and we're fueling these failures. So the power of life is upon your tongue. The power of death is upon your tongue. I'm here to prophesy to the mothers in the room. Keep speaking life. To your husband to your children keep speaking life to them keep speaking life to your house to your cars to everything to your schools keep speaking life to the on the state on your country oh jesus don't too many people walking around saying oh we're, our country is doomed we're all gonna die war is gonna start what's happening we're the power of life and the power of death it, de it depends on us and we have angels that are backing our words we have angels that are backing our words as believers. And every time you speak, something will happen. I think I was just prophesying to one person there. This man gets struck by an angel. Boom. Worms came and killed him. That's an embarrassing death. This man died by worms. It doesn't say he died, then worms ate him. It says that. He was eaten by worms and died. That's quite gross. Next verse, but the word of God grew and multiplied. 
Everything in Peter's life was automatic, excluding the door being opened by the believers. But everything was automatic for him. Because if you ask the question, if you ask the question, why was Peter there? Not necessarily how, but if you ask him why, how, how did he get there? Why did he get there? It wasn't anything to do with Peter that he was in prison. It's not like he killed someone. It's not like he performed a miracle on a Sabbath. There was no reason for him to be in prison. So what got you into your prison has nothing to do with you. You have to fight the same way you got in. It's by doing nothing. Just go to sleep. The battle that you're in now, if you didn't get yourself in it, you won't get yourself out of it. God will get you out of this battle. If you didn't get yourself in this battle, God will get you out of the battle. Just go to sleep. Don't worry. Things will be all right. All right. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying to somebody here. If you're in a battle you never got yourself into, someone pulled you in. Someone will pull you out. Just stay on your lane. Stay focused. God's going to get you out of the situation. The righteous, what they fall. If God is going to see his own child in a pit, I guarantee you he is going to send an angel to pull you out of that pit. So don't think that you'll be in this battle forever. Someone say the battle's over. Prophesy over yourself. My battle's finished. This battle's done. I'm going to get up and keep on walking. Angels shall guide me. The church is praying for me. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. There's a difference between praying alone versus corporate prayer. There's different benefits that you can have when you pray by yourself versus when you pray in a room like this full of believing believers. And the truth of the matter is there are unbelieving believers. But in this church we are believing believers. We believe that God can do something for you. We believe that God answers prayers. So praying alone empowers you as a person and makes you a person of quick perception. It attracts personal testimonies when you pray by yourself. But corporate prayer, it attracts unity and can take you, it can put you in a place of taking down stronger forces. Corporate prayer attracts unity and can take down stronger forces. It attracts signs and wonders within the community. When the church prays, miracles are bound to happen. The testimonies are inevitable. They're going to happen. I'm here to remind the church, keep on praying. Prayer is the church's most powerful weapon. When the circumstances seem impossible, our first response should be to seek God in prayer as a church. When it's impossible for us to find a building, we pray that God will send a building. When it's impossible for certain things, God will send a person because we were praying. He will send an angel and sometimes He will send you an investor. Those people are called what? Angel investors. Hallelujah. May God send you an angel investor. When you pray, you get benefits and promises from Scripture when you pray. Hear this. Can I go through these few things and then we can continue? When you pray, you'll be forewarned. If you're taking notes, write this down. You will be forewarned. Potential evil will be will be prevented when you pray. This is called divine protection. When you pray, it attracts God's angels, which has many benefits. When you pray, you will be saved from getting diverted from your calling. When you pray, it gives you peace of mind because you're putting your problems underneath God and not God. Oh, Jesus. You get the idea. When you pray, you're making your problems smaller than your God. So it puts you in the right perspective when you pray. 
The further the problem, the smaller it appears. So it puts distance between you and your problem when you pray. Because you're getting closer to God. Now, I want us to do some declarations in prayer. Today I was teaching about the church praying. You were struck down, but you're not destroyed. I want us to declare in prayer. I don't know if the, they wrote them down on the screen. Okay, we're going to pray in a minute. I have about 10 declarations I want you to go through. While you're praying, feel free to take a picture of them or go through the live stream. And uh, here's one declaration there. But we'll declare them as a church. We're declaring and praying over our families. Amen? We're declaring and praying for our families. How many of you here has family that needs prayer? Before we pray, there's someone here that has like... Uh, a nerve problem. I don't know. What do you call it? Carper tunnel. Car. What is it? That one. And uh, it's a nerve issue. Arthritis. Arthritis. It's a nerve issue, right? Carper tunnel is a nerve issue. It's a nerve issue. Somebody here have that? Occasional nerve problem. Come. I don't know if it's nerve damage or nerve problem. Please check online as well. It's been bothering me all week. Someone's left shoulder as well. Before we start praying and declaring, left shoulder in pain. Lift your hands. You had surgery for it. Shoulder. Do y'all believe the, the miracle working power of God are you sure do you believe that one word can change a person's life do you believe in the prophets of God are you sure do you believe you are a prophet do you believe that everything you speak shall surely come to pass hallelujah uh, God is gonna heal you both right about now lift up your hands I decree and I declare every problem, every issue you're having with your nervous system, nerves, be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Be healed. Be healed. Pain, get out of her. Church, stretch out your hands. Say, pain, get out. In Jesus' name. Your shoulder, lift up your arm. The one that is in pain. In the name of Jesus. Pain get out of her. Any spirit that's trying to mess her up and torment her, I command you to leave her. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are healed. I want you to move it around. Huh? It's perfect. No more pain. Somebody clap for Jesus. I don't know if you can test yours, but you are healed. Somebody clap for Jesus. I want us to declare a word. As I was praying for them, you are also healed. You should take, check your bodies as well. Check it. You are healed. Healing is the children's bread. They belong to everybody. God can heal anyone at any given time. Just give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to do declarations. Are you ready? Are you ready to declare words? Now some of you, you haven't declared a word over your family in a long time. You're going to declare today. Don't worry. No one's going to be watching you. You're going to be doing it with us all. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet and let's begin to pray for our families. The first prayer point. Declaration of unity. Do you see it? Are you ready? Are you sure? We're going to read all together. Declare all together with power. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I declare that my family is united in love, peace, and harmony. We are bound together by the love of Christ and walk in unity, supporting and uplifting one another. Begin to lift up your voice and pray for the unity in your family. God, unite my family. Unite my family, oh God. We need unity in our family once again. 
You have brought unity to us when we first got together. I pray for the same unity. The first love shall be in our lives again. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus every single family in this room i pray there shall be unity in your houses unity and you shall get along with one another i pray in the name of jesus lift up your voice and pray in other tongues pray for somebody in your family lift up your voice if there's someone in your family that's causing disunity i decree and i declare god shall bring peace in their life there shall be unity again if that person is bringing disunity, I decree and I declare, may they experience the love of God and they shall bring unity again in the house. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Unity, you shall have unity in your houses. Lift up your voice and pray. I want to hear you praying. Lift up your voice and pray. If you're watching online, pray with us. Pray for your family's unity in the name of Jesus. Jesus name the second declaration we're doing is the declaration of protection we need to pray for the protection of our houses of our children our nephews our nieces our parents protection from car accidents protections from school shootings protection from fear protection from all these things we need to pray for protection of outside people coming into our family to disrupt the peace that we have. We need to pray for protection. Are you ready? Declaration of protection. Can you bring it up? Let me know when it's there. You ready? Media. Declaration of protection. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Libra Santa Lada Biacada. Or I'll just start prophesying to somebody. protection lift up your voice and pray there shall be protection you can repeat after me I decree and I declare that no weapon formed against my family shall prosper we are covered by the blood of Jesus and God's angels are guarding us in our, all of our ways Lift up your voice and pray for the protection of your family. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against your husband will prosper. No weapon formed against your wife will prosper. No weapon formed against your son will prosper. No weapon formed against your child will prosper. I decree and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Let there be protection over your family. La basonda la da via cada, mino santa la da via. In the name of Jesus, stand or roll, santa la da via.
third declaration is a declaration of provision. I'm going to need, you need provision of God this season. We're going to declare provision over our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren, our families, brothers and sisters, those who need provision. They're going to pray for your family's provision. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I declare that God is our provider. God is our provider. And all our needs are met. And all our needs are met. According to his riches and glory. His riches and glory. According to his riches and glory. According to his riches and glory. We lack nothing. We lack nothing. For the Lord is our shepherd. For the Lord is our shepherd. So God, I thank you. God, I thank you. For the provision of my family. For the provision of my family. My relatives. My relatives. Distant relatives. Distant Lift up your voice and pray for provision. Thank God for the provision that he's doing already. Thank God for the jobs he's lining up for you. You will have jobs during Christmas. You will have jobs during Thanksgiving. You'll be wealthy in the name of Jesus. You shall have provision by the Lord according to his riches in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. fourth declaration is the declaration of health how many of you have someone sick in your family you need to declare healing over them it's not just me that is going to declare but all of us shall declare healing we're praying as a church and God shall respond for the healing of your family hallelujah, hallelujah. declaration of health are you ready I decree and I declare that my family, that my family walks, in divine health and healing. walks in divine health and healing. Sickness and disease have no place in our home. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, my family is healed. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. I want you to declare by the stripe of Jesus and then begin to name the person and say they are healed. Hallelujah. Begin to pray. Lift up your voice and pray for your family. By the stripes of Jesus, my family is healed. Lift up your voice and pray. No sickness, no disease. Oh yes, no disease will touch my family. Oh, I decree and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, any sickness that's following my bloodline be removed in Jesus' name. No one shall die of cancer. No one shall have diabetic issues. No one shall have health issues that preventing them from sleeping. I pray in the name of Jesus.
fifth declaration is the declaration of peace. How many of you need peace in your family? There's too much fighting going on in your house. Your son keeps cursing you out. I'm here to tell somebody you got to pray for peace in your family because Amen. God shall respond Amen. with speed. He is the God of peace. He is the Prince of peace. I want you to begin to declare with me. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare that the peace of God rules in our hearts. That the peace of God rules in our hearts. And in our home. And in our home. Anxiety. Anxiety. Fear. fear confusion, confusion. Must flee. Must flee. For the Prince of Peace. For the Prince of Peace. Reigns in my family. Reigns in our family. Prince of Peace. Prince of peace. Reigns in my family. Reigns in our family. We shall have peace again. Lift your voice and pray for peace in your home. Lift your voice and pray. Rando Sata Maradia Kuja Lamande. There shall be peace in our family again. We shall understand one another. I pray that every home that has arguments, may God bring peace in the family. confusion in the families I want us to pray for the peace not only for our physical family now but now I want us to pray for the peace of our spiritual family I'm gonna pray for the peace of our spiritual family you're gonna pray for the peace of your church if this is your church you're gonna pray for the peace of our church if you have a church home and there is complete utter chaos in your church the church is falling apart. Nobody knows where to go. The pastor has fell into sin, whatever it might have been. I want you to pray for the peace of your spiritual family. You got two families. You got blood family and you got your spiritual family. I want us to pray for the peace of our spiritual family. Lift up your voice and pray. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. The peace in our spiritual family. Peace be still. All arguments that are in our hearts. All arguments that are forming within us. About what we would say. May that be removed from us. I pray for peace in my spiritual family. I pray for peace in my church. I pray for peace in my pastor's family. I pray for peace in my spiritual family. Lift up your voice and pray for the peace of our churches. Lift up your voice. sisters and brothers in law God I pray for peace and this month you shall experience peace you shall have that Christmas party with your family and there shall be no arguments you shall have peace 
a thanksgiving when you celebrate as a family. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will look past the past and you will move on forward with love towards one another. God, I pray that the reason of our peace will not be because of a death, but the reason of our peace will be because of your life that you have given us. In the mighty name of Jesus. The sixth declaration. You don't have to hold hands now. The six declarations. Are you all enjoying praying? Declaration of spiritual growth. You've got to declare over your own spiritual growth and the spiritual growth of your children so that they don't become stagnant. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. I, I don't hear you. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare that my family, that my family is growing, is growing in, faith, in, in faith, in love, in love and knowledge of God. And knowledge of God. We are rooted and grounded in His Word. We are rooted and grounded in His Word. And we bear fruit in every good work. And we bear fruit in every good work. And we bear fruit. And we bear fruit because we're connected, because we're connected to Jesus. To Jesus. We bear, fruit we bear fruit because we are connected, we are connected to, the vine. to the vine. He is the vine, he is the vine. And, we are the and we are the branches. He who stays connected, who stays connected shall, be fruitful. shall be fruitful. So Father, I pray, so Father, I pray and I decree and I declare, and I and I declare for the spiritual growth in my life, in my nothing, life. Will nothing will cause me to be stagnant. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray for your spiritual growth. of purpose are you ready yes. I decree and I declare I decree and I declare I decree and I declare, I decree and I declare that every member of my family, that every member of my family shall fulfill their God-given purpose. God purpose we are called, we are called anointed, anointed equipped, equipped to walk in his good works that God has prepared for us. We are called. We are chosen. We are anointed. Begin to declare over your family purpose. They shall walk in their purpose. I decree and I declare. Lift up your voice and pray for purpose of your family. Your family's purpose shall be fulfilled. Your purpose shall be fulfilled. Your church's purpose shall be fulfilled. You shall walk in purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. Hey, Kurava Santa. Oh, Sate. Harani Akanta Lavia Sate. Every family member shall walk in their God given purpose. Harani Akanta Lavia Sate. Harani Akanta. Harani Akanta. Harani Akanta.
Peace Declaration. Are you ready? It's the declaration of joy. God is going to bring back your smile. God is going to bring back your joy. It's the declaration of joy. Are you ready? I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. Hold on. Wait. I'm not sure who this is. We're about to declare joy. Sir, who is Mario? Mario. I heard Mario four times. Mario, 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 Mario. Who's my Mar dad and my brother? Your dad and your brother. Indeed. When we were praying and declaring health, the Lord says an angel was released for good health in the bloodline of Mario. You have a brother called Mario and a father called Mario. I saw healing coming to Mario. Prophesy. And then I was about to pray for joy. And I'm seeing joy coming to the brother Mario. Prophesy. What the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn for his good. I saw documents and I saw approved, stamped approved in your family. I don't know who's believing God for papers in your family, but I keep seeing approved in red letters. Approved, approved, approved. I see joy in your family like never before. There is a complete joy coming to your family. There is another Mario. It's like a third Mario. Do you know who that is? There's four Marios. There's four. One of the Marios I'm seeing in another country. I don't know if this is Guatemala. Go deep, Papa. Yes. Huh? Go deep, Papa. She's from Guatemala. Go deep, Papa. Guatemala. There is someone with a connection called Mario in Guatemala. There is, huh? And they want to come to America. I didn't know that. I'm telling you, they'll come to America. Prophesy. I saw approved, stamped on Mario. Prophesy. And I see his family being able to come to America. And I decree and I declare. Within six months, they shall have their approval. Prophesy! Six months, Prophesy. you shall have your approval. Prophesy! Six months, you shall have your approvals. Prophesy. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Prophesy! Maria. Maria. Huh? My mom. Your mom. Do you know me? Do I know you? Did we talk before? Not oh, yet. Yeah. Prophesy! Prophesy! There is Mario and Maria. Mario and Maria. I saw unity taking place in their lives. How was their health? They're okay. They're gonna be perfect. They're gonna be perfect. I saw joy going to Maria. I saw joy going to Mario. I saw them getting healed. I saw one of them having an issue right about here. Huh? Maria has problems where? In her liver. I see her getting healed even as we're here, declaring over the atmosphere. Prophesy. You didn't come here for no reason. There is an angel going to your state. There's an angel going to Salt Lake City. There's an angel that's going back with you. And what the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn it for your good as a family. Can I prophesy? Prophesy! Pro Pro -papa. I see God giving you a bow and arrow. He's putting it in your hands. A bow and arrow. And he's giving you one chance to defeat the enemy. Only one. He's giving you one arrow and one bow. Hear this. When God is giving you one, you have one chance. This means that you don't have a lot of chances. You know what I'm talking about. He's giving you one arrow. Pull back and don't miss the target. One. Prophesy. Prophesy. Somebody pull it back. Prophetically release it. 
say the devil's in trouble. Devil's in trouble. Every person disturbing my family. 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 Be struck. Be struck. And be removed. And be removed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to declare? Declaration of joy. Woo! Shadabai. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare that the joy of the Lord. That the joy of the Lord is our strength. Is our strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of what? The Lord is our strength. Is our strength. Our home is filled with laughter. Our home is filled with laughter. I declare my home is filled with joy. I declare our home. And thanksgiving, and thanksgiving as we rejoice in as God's we, goodness, as we rejoice in God's goodness every, day, every day. We will not rejoice. We will not rejoice because of what God did. Because of what God did. We are going to rejoice. We are going to rejoice because of where He's going. Because of where He's going. And what He's doing for us. And what He's doing for us. We thank God. We thank God for giving us joy. For giving us joy. Lift up your voice and pray for joy. Declare joy in your family. I decree and I declare joy over your families. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice. for the ninth declaration. The ninth declaration is the most important one for your family to have encounters with God. And that declaration is the declaration of forgiveness and grace. We're going to declare forgiveness in the atmosphere. Because the truth of the matter is, it takes one person to be the badder person, and it takes another person to forgive that person that was that did something bad against them. So you may have been the bad person, and you may have already apologized, but they might have not even forgiven you. So what you've got to declare is forgiveness in the atmosphere, so that they would forgive you because you already apologized. Maybe vice versa. Maybe they apologize to you, but you haven't yet forgave them in your heart because of how, what the extent of what they did was, was so evil. So you've got to forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to declare forgiveness and grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. That our family. That that my, family that my family walks in forgiveness and grace. Walks in forgiveness and grace. We are quick to forgive one another. We are quick to forgive one another. Showing love and mercy. Showing love and mercy. Just as Christ has forgiven us. Just as Christ has forgiven us. Father, we forgive our family members. Father, we forgive our family members. Father, I forgive my family. Father, I forgive my family. Father, I forgive my father. Father, I forgive my father. My dad, my mom, I forgive them. I forgive them. I just got too quiet right about there. Ah. I forgive my dad. I forgive my dad. I'm going to keep saying this one until everybody says it. I'm 
sorry. I forgive my dad. I forgive my dad. I forgive my physical dad. I forgive my physical dad. I let it go. I let it go. This weight has been too much. This weight has been too much. I forgive my physical dad. I forgive my physical dad. I forgive my spiritual fathers. I forgive my spiritual fathers. I forgive my mother. 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 Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. For taking off this weight. For taking off this weight. I forgive. I forgive. And give grace. And give grace. Lift up your voice and pray. If you need to forgive someone, do it. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, I decree and I declare forgiveness in the atmosphere. May people forgive them, families, one another. I decree and I declare. Let there be a move of God in their family. of faith over fear and before I begin to declare with you faith over fear I'm going to prophesy another person prophesy is that alright prophesy is that okay prophesy I just don't see the person like I see the face in my vision but I don't see the people's faces matching the face that I see in my vision Prophesy. Prophesy. Maybe she's online. Prophesy. Renwa, Ren, Renwa, is she here? Is her daughter here? She may be watching online. I'll just text her the prophecy. They're usually here. Prophesy. But I had a word for her. What's her daughter's name? Vanessa. 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 Huh? Vanessa. I saw Vanessa moving. And I heard Vanessa's moving. Come here. I heard Vanessa's moving. Prophet. I heard Vanessa's moving. Professor. And if you know Vanessa Scott, she just moved. Yes. Just now. That's probably why they're not even here, because they just moved. Mm. Professor. Huh? Listen. That's why I'm here. Say it again. I'm moving too, that's why I'm here. 
You are moving Prophesy. to. That's why you're here. Are you moving to Atlanta? Somebody clap for Jesus. I was going to prophesy to you to move to Atlanta because there's a dream you've received about moving and then you receive another dream about your old house and the old house dream represented you going backwards but the other dream you had was about you going forwards and God is telling me to tell you you've made the right decision prophesy we're about to declare faith over fear when you're moving don't fear God shall back you up prophesy every time God declares a word you can move with ease and with grace He's gonna help you out. It doesn't mean that you won't have prisoner, prison guards next to you, watching you. It doesn't mean that people won't watch you and criticize you. But it just means that you have the grace to do it by God. Whenever God declares a word, it gives you grace to go smoothly. Doors will open for you in the name of Jesus. As I was declaring a dream you had in the past about an uh, old house that you used to live at. Huh? I just sold it. You just sold it. Jesus. Prophesy. There was a dream you had. You had a dream of your old house. And when you dreamt of your old house, there was some things in the dream that didn't make sense. Come, stand here. Somebody clap for Jesus. The dream was a dream to tell you that you must pray and declare. I want you to go back and re-watch this declaration part. And I want you to declare over your family over and over. Because your prayers have been heard. The dream that God warned you about your old house represented you going backwards so many years and losing so much in your life. But God is saying that you will not lose those things. I warned you so that you can pray and you did pray. God gave you the dream as well so that he can show you that everything will be all right when you're moving forward. Prophesy. So don't worry. I keep seeing a grace upon your life. Prophesy. I don't know if you're preparing to move or something, but God is going to give you grace as well. You're going to have grace to move forward. You're going to have grace to move on. Prophesy. You're going to have grace to move forward. You're going to have grace to move on. Can I prophesy? Prophesy. I don't know if you have a car. It's a car. I'm seeing an SUV. SUV. Come. Stand there. You said what in the microphone for online people so they can hear? Uh, that is always been great to us. We, we have a lot of cars. You have a lot of cars? Yeah, I own a towing company. You have a towing company? Indeed, we do. There's a car you're going to sell. Always sell. Hear this. You're going to sell one car. Your next car you sell. Everything you make, give it to this house, the house of God. Got it. And see God do a big move and change in your life. Amen. Amen. There's a person that I'm seeing about to get fired. Probably. Fire them. Prophesy. I'm going to continue prophesying now. Prophesy. I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing you driving. And I'm seeing you driving a Hyundai Genesis. Genesis. Genesis is our daughter. Huh? Genesis is our daughter. Your daughter's name is Genesis. Somebody shall prophesy. 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 I see you driving Hyundai Genesis. Prophesy. And what you shall give into the house of God will be that prayers of your daughter being answered. Every time you sow a seed, you realize a harvest will come. And you are sowing a seed into a prophetic house. The prophetic house is different than a different house. Can I prophesy to somebody here? Prophesy. When you sow into a prophetic house, the Bible says, believe in the prophets and you shall. That means when you sow into a prosperous ground, or sorry, a prophetic ground, you will have a prosperous harvest. There's prosperity coming to your company. Your company was about to break and crash, but because of you being here, God is restoring and I'm seeing millions coming to you multi-million dollar breakthrough prophesy prophesy hallelujah before any breakthrough comes there will be an attack every brother say it again every time that sounded like it was experience the way he said it so fast too. every time that's so true right before your biggest financial breakthrough what gets attacked 
your finances. If it's not your finances, help me out. It's your wife. It's your husband. Someone gets attacked. So one of two. So you know that the moment these things are being attacked, if you don't pass the test, if you don't pass, ah, things go down. But when you pass the test, you go from one level of financial status to the next level of financial status. Your financial status is about to increase Hallelujah. in the mighty name of Jesus. May your finances have an increase. I receive. Oh, I decree, I declare you have an increase in your bonus and your income I in receive. Jesus' mighty name. I declared that over somebody. I don't see him. He had a $5 an hour raise. What was that? Who was that? Where is he? He had a $5 raise. It was you? $5 raise after a declaration. It just came out of nowhere. Yeah. When to work? Hey, we just want to give you a $5 per hour raise. Somebody shout, I receive. I receive. I receive that. And I don't even get paid an hour, man. Man, may you get paid per hour. If you don't work but if you don't work you know you got to work way more when you have your own company you don't work nine to five you work from 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. again just to get your business on its feet hallelujah but I saw Genesis I saw her doing school school huh she's in school I see God blessing her mind very very dangerous she's dangerously smart indeed she is i saw her getting scholarships to so many colleges that any person would want to desire she's been she been to college we never pay a dime you didn't pay a dime she's been to college oh jesus i see god blessing her mind but we have to pray for genesis because when the devil attacks he attacks the strongest point of a person yes and that's their mind. Very true. Is Very it your true. oldest? No. She's the middle one. She's the middle one. She's always been the troublemaker because she's too smart. Middle child thing. It's normal. Who here's a middle child? You see the troublemakers in the room? You see them? <laughs> you can attest to that, right? You're kind of like, you get away with certain things. But you got spanked the most. Jenny has a good heart. Yeah, my wife is also a middle child. Good heart. She is, she's good. I love her. But uh, she has, she's been blessed by God. This is actually the grace of God and the hand of God upon her life. Because she's not only bilingual, but there's multiple languages in her. I see her speaking in tongues. Professor. Her primary language Amen. that God sees and responds to. We need to pray for her. Because I see an arrow being shot against your daughter. I don't know how we say it in English. It depends on you. So the arrow that God gave you, once you defeat that devil, your daughter, I see her going like this. But if you miss the shot, I see your daughter losing her mind. And this, you can listen, when God gives you something outside of gifts of the Spirit, if God gives you certain grace, He can take it. If He gives you an anointing, He can take it. But if he gives you a gift of the Spirit, he will not take it. It's a promise. So when God gives you certain, uh, uh, certain grace in business, he can take it. Trust me. Even if you're a multimillionaire, he can take the grace. And in a week, you can have nothing. Yeah, it's only him. Huh? Yeah, he has the power. It's only him. He rises. He pushes that. He has the power. It's always been great to us. That's why we're here in America. I don't know who you're connected to that has a restaurant. There's a restaurant that I keep seeing in the spirit. Someone selling food. Professor. Professor. This is like in Texas. Somebody in Texas having a restaurant. I want you to write it down. It'll come to pass. 
you'll find me and you'll talk to me about it when you understand. But I'm seeing somebody opening a restaurant or having a restaurant in Texas. You're going to pray for that person and their business will take off because you carry a grace for wealth. I receive. You carry a grace for wealth. You will declare, you will pray for wealth and people shall be completely transformed in their financial situation. When business is stuck, all you got to do is pray and God will respond. I see a big house, huge, that God is preparing for your family. Big house. I see it like white brick house. I think inside clean. Uh, not hardwood floor, but I forget what it's called, like laminate type of white looking floor. Kitchen, I'm seeing white. Kitchen tile. Refrigerator with a screen on it. I'm seeing God blessing you with a big house. Uh, don't get comfortable. God's about to increase your life like never before. Hallelujah. Stretch out your hands towards them. Father, I decree and I declare, may there be peace over their life. All of them, all three that are standing here, may there be a grace over their life. Every fear that they may be having, may it be removed. For God is behind every move that's being made. I decree and I declare, may God give you peace. Touch. Peace in your mind. Peace in your mind. May God give you peace in your mind. I decree and I declare, no devil will touch you from this very day. You shall have peace. I decree and I declare, any demon that's trying to destroy this family, be removed in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare. May the fire of the Holy Spirit be within you. May the peace of God be in your mind and in your heart. I decree and I declare it is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. declaration is the 10th declaration today is the 10th of September and it's 10 o'clock hallelujah put it on 10 I decree and I declare 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 I don't hear you I decree and I declare that faith not fear faith not fear. Not fear. Rules, in my family. Rules in my family. We trust in God's promises. And we are not afraid because He is with us. He is guiding us. He is guiding us. He is protecting us. He is protecting us. He is leading us. He is leading us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Lift up your voice and pray for faith in your family and fear to be removed. Every time you go and move by faith, you shall not have any fear. Every time you make a decision, the fear will be removed and broken in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. for every person that's here right now I decree and I declare that everything they came here for they may receive it and go home with it I pray the devil that's trying to destroy them will not be able to devour them I decree and I declare that devourer is rebuked that devourer is rebuked that devourer is rebuked I decree and I declare it is done somebody shout it is done it is done it is done it is done. Somebody shout amen. amen. It is so. It is so. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to find the best offering you can give unto the Lord. 
And those declarations that we just declared, place a seed on it. If you don't know what to get, find a seed of 111. Find 111 and sow in the house of God. If you don't have that, find something that you can give unto His house. Hallelujah. Are you ready to sow into the house of God? We have prayed, we have declared, we know that God shall do it and we're going to sow a seed into the house of God as well. Hallelujah. All the giving information is on your screen. If you're watching online, you can give it to the house of God. There's a great needs that we're about to take care of financially. Uh, glory be to Jesus. We're going to be buying some new cameras. Amen. Amen. We're buying some new cameras, some new lenses for the church. Uh, that way it's going to be always in the church. We'll be using our own very cameras so that we don't have to use anybody else's cameras. Amen. Currently we are borrowing, but we are not borrowers. We are going to be lenders. Amen. Amen. There's a time and place for everything, but I want us to grow as a church. And I want us to buy more better media equipment for ourselves to have. And uh, some other things I'm not going to mention here now, but give the best you can. Each camera, I believe uh, the Sony, you don't need to know which camera, but it's a great camera. Uh, <laughs> I was about to go in the details and the specs of them, but uh, those cameras are about $2,500 or so per body of the camera, plus lenses and SD cards and tripods. It just goes up from there. I believe we'll need about, just for the cameras, tripods, lenses, it's 14,000 just for those cameras for us to run a good media team in our church. Amen. We will get it. We will get it. What's 14,000 for God? What's 100,000 for God? Nothing. God can do it anytime, but I want us to contribute and give to the house of God. If you have your seed ready, I want you to lift it up in your right hand. If you have it ready. The Bible says um, Jesus lifted up the bread. He blessed it, then it multiplied. What you lift up and bless, it multiplies. Don't just lift it, but I want you to bless your offering. Bless it. The Bible says it's the cheerful. God blesses what? The cheerful giver. So when you're giving, you got to bless your seed. It shouldn't be that hard for you to give what you're giving. Whatever you're giving, you should bless it and say, God, I release this. I bless your house. I thank you. So I want us to hold it up in your right hand and begin to bless your seed. Father, we thank you. I bless my seed. Father, bless my seed. Oh, I don't hear you. I mean, we were just declaring so much. And all of a sudden, when it comes to finance, God, I bless my seed. In the name of Jesus. My seed shall multiply. My seed shall multiply. More, souls shall More souls shall be saved because of my giving. Of my God, I thank you for being able to participate in sowing into your house. In, into your house. in, Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. All right, hallelujah. Come up front and give the best you can. And if you have a phone, you can tap your phone in the front. As you're coming up front, I want you to lift up your voice and pray. Bless your seed as you're walking. Worship. Tonga la via sata. have big testimonies. Amen. Amen. I have an important announcement to make. Which camera are we on? That one. Important announcement. And I want you all to get ready to shout. Starting October. Starting October. We are starting officially Sunday services. 
We are starting Sunday services in the beginning of October. Make your way to the first service that we're going to have right in this building, 2720 Mall of Georgia Boulevard, Beaufort, Georgia. I don't want you to miss it for any reason. Fly here, drive here, get on a boat, do what you got to do, swim. Make your way to Kingdom Embassy Atlanta. Our first Sunday service is going to be so powerful. And um, also, what time? Great idea, great question. What time? 4 p.m. So you have time to go to your church and then come to our church. Amen? But this will be your home church. Amen. Oh, yeah, you can do what you want. But I invite you to come out every Sunday starting in October, 4 p.m. And look out for the flyers. Help us share the word, spread the news that there's a prophetic church in Georgia. That God is doing signs, wonders, and miracles in. And uh, by the grace of God, we'll have some special guests coming uh, that you all dearly love. I know that for a fact. Amen. Are you excited? Now another thing. Uh, next week, Tuesday. Next week, Tuesday. Uh, everybody here, you're going to receive a piece of paper. If uh, you have your own paper, notebook, that's okay. You can use your own. I want you to write down your prayer requests. If it's debt, write down debt. If it's uh, healing, you write down healing and what for. You're going to write down every prayer request you have. You have one week. And I want you to bring it to church. Some of you, you can write it on posters. Bring your posters. Write down your prayer request. If it's deliverance, just write deliverance on that poster. If it's healing, maybe God will respond the same day. According to what you write shall be responded the same day. Amen? If it's healing, it'll happen the same day. Bring someone that needs healing next week. You're, are you quiet now? Someone that needs healing, bring them next week. Someone that needs deliverance, bring them next week. Amen? Let's fill the house of God. And uh, again, write down. If you need a piece of paper, they'll give you. But I'm sure you can bring your own paper, poster, anything you need prayer for. I know God will do it for you. Amen? Stand up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Close your eyes. And I just want us to give God thanks. Lift up your voice. Say, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. For what you are doing in Atlanta. I thank you, Father. I, thank you, Father. I can't hear you pray. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for what you are doing. For what you are doing and what you have done. I thank you for the word that you have given me. I thank you for the word you have given me. And my family. And my family. I pray for protection. I pray for protection. Over my entire family. Over my entire and family. And even my drive home. And even my drive Father, home. Father, I thank you for the angels that you have assigned. Father, I thank you for the angels you have assigned. To protect me and my family. To protect me and my family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 